Hi everyone, my name is Nick Marshall and I'm the manager of exhibitions and programs at the George Eastman Museum. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a camera obscura at home. But first, what is a camera obscura? A camera obscura is a dark box or room with a small hole in one of its outside facing walls that lets in light to produce an upside down and backwards image on the opposing wall. The discovery of this device predates the invention of photography by centuries and was used as a tool for artists to trace their subject matter, rendering perspective with complete accuracy. In the 19th century, Nisei Fournieps began to experiment with light sensitive materials in the camera obscura, eventually leading to the invention of photography. Here's what you'll need to get started. Scrap cardboard or black trash bags or a black plastic sheeting like I have here. Painter's tape or duct tape, depending on how sturdy you want the materials to hold. Painter's tape is more transparent, so you may have to layer it in places, but it's much easier to remove. Electrical tape is optional, but can be very helpful. Scissors, a blade, a pencil, washers. I like to have a couple different options so I can play around with different aperture sizes. If you don't have a washer, then you could find a coin or something circular with a small diameter. A thin piece of cardstock to mount your lens to. A sunny day and a room with a window. The less amount of windows in a room, the less you have to cover. North facing windows are preferable so that the sun moving across the southern sky is always lighting your view and not looking into the sun. Now we're ready to build the camera obscura. First remove any window furnishings you have so that it's easier to access the windows. Then measure your windows and cut down the cardboard or plastic sheeting to the size needed to cover them completely. Tape up your cardboard or plastic sheeting trying to go all the way around the material with the tape as much as you can so that you are not letting in any additional light. You can turn off the light in your room to check and see if there's any areas where light is coming through. If there are, use your tape to patch them. Let's head back to our table to prepare the aperture. I'm going to trace the inside and outside of the washer. Then I'm going to cut a hole around the inside circle. Next, I'll place my washer back where I had traced it and tape it to my lens board. As I mentioned before, if you don't have a washer, then you can trace around something like a coin that has a small diameter, then cut out the circle with your blade. As with all apertures, the smaller the hole, the sharper the focus of the image. But the image will appear darker and more difficult to see. Using a larger hole will create a brighter image, but the focus may be a bit blurrier. Next, cut a small hole or rectangle in your material over the window you're using as your view. Plan for this hole to be slightly bigger than the size of the aperture, but smaller than your lens board. Next, I'll tape the lens board over the hole I've made on my window covering. I'm going to add some additional electrical tape to block out any light that may be shining through the thin cardstock. You may be asking yourself, but Nick, what if the walls in my room are painted dark? Well, that's a relatively easy fix. Try to find an old white sheet or some pieces of whiteboard and tape or pin them to the wall to create a more reflective surface for the light. When you shut the door to the room, put a towel in front of it to help block the light from coming underneath. Now, turn off the lights and you're inside a camera. Let your eyes adjust to the darkness and more details will slowly start to reveal themselves. Your view probably does not look this bright, but that's expected. This image was taken inside the room with a slow shutter speed and high ISO to capture the light falling across the different surfaces. If you happen to have some old eyeglasses around the house, experiment with the lenses by putting them in front of the aperture to see if it sharpens or brightens your image. In this photograph, I put a plus 0.25 eyeglass lens in front of the aperture and it is almost perfectly in focus. In this image, I've gone into the opposite corner of the room and am now looking back at the hole, letting the light in. This really gives you a sense that the entire room is transformed into a camera, including the ceiling. You could even try putting white cloth or board down on the floor to see if there are any clouds in the sky. Have fun experimenting.